Good morning, or depending on when you're listening to this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I was always told I had a voice for radio, so I've made a podcast all about the Pokemon trading card game. And you're listening to PTCG Radio. Now, this week, we are going to be talking about a little bit of news, as always, and then we're going to be looking at the two big decks which have come out of Furious Fist, and they are Seismitoad-based decks, and they are fighting-based decks. And we're going to go into them in a fair amount of detail. I'm going to talk about the main cards that you may wish to play, or cards which, you know, I think you shouldn't play in decks like that. And we're going to be going through some of the key matchups, weaknesses, etc. And then I'm going to let you know whether it's actually worth going for this kind of stuff or not. Because, quite frankly, I care. And I want you guys to do well. Unless you're one of the idiots on PTCGO who keeps giving me random lip, in which case I, I don't want you to do well. I hope you do really badly. Like the um, Coyote Hunter, who is this week's PTCGO Idiot of the Week. Now that I'm playing PTCGO more, I think I need to bring that back. Coyote Hunter is this week's PTCGO Idiot of the Week, because in a Seismitoad Mirror matchup, I said good games, I was about to win as always. He started moaning about his draw, so I explained to him the plays which lost him the game and the plays which won me the game. You know, trying to... He was complaining about his luck, so I figured I'll explain to him exactly why the game ended like it did. Try and help him to improve as a player and stop whinging about his luck so much. And, although if you look at my Twitter, that's kind of what I've been doing lately. But I've got a reason, darn it. And instead he just moaned about how I drew better despite me pointing out specific plays he could have made in order to improve his chances of winning the game. And that is why Coyote Hunter is this week's PTCGO Idiot of the Week. I feel like I need to record a sound bite for that, so that we've got this big important voice going, Idiot of the Week. It's something I'm going to look into. Sorry if you were driving and that went a bit loud then. So, first piece of news this week. It's not really news, to be honest with you, but it's worth pointing out anyway. And that is that Phantom Forces has officially been announced. And it has been revealed, the Gengar, Mega Gengar EX, and Gengar Spirit Link, those cards have been revealed, nice and simply. But there's been a little bit of other news, nothing particularly that we can look into or start building um, strategies or decks around, but ideas that have come out that we can be looking into. We know we're getting Malamar EX and Florges EX, and they will be joining Gengar EX, Manectric EX, Dialga EX, and Edgeslash EX in this set. Um, also announced for the first time, there will be a full metal Dialga EX, which, feels etched, which features etched artwork and a solid metal colour. No pictures of this have come out, which is somewhat disappointing, but that sounds pretty cool. Dialga EX, assuming it's the same one we've already had spoiled, isn't particularly great. It does 150 for 4 energy, discarding 2, if I remember correctly. But you stick a muscle band on that, it goes up to 170. And that's not forget that in the same set, we are going to be getting Bronzong, which works like E-Electric to put metal energy onto your benched metal Pokemon. We know it's going to feature seven Pokemon EX cards, which with Malamar, Florges, Gengar, Manectric, Dialga, and Edgeslash does mean there's one other to be revealed, unless I've forgotten one or there is, you know, two versions of one. Now, there are two Mega Gengar EX coming, because I told you about the shiny Mega Gengar EX promo card, so maybe we'll be getting a shiny Gengar EX. Who knows? It's also been uh, revealed that in the set we will see Venomoth, Yamega, Pyrrhal, Loudrid, Galvantula... Heliolisk, Kingler, Feraligator, Frillish, and Jellicent. And of course, Deancey will be in the set. We knew that previously. So, just an interesting little note there for anyone who um, is wondering what's going to be in the set. We've also seen an image of the Mega Metagross EX set. And if I'm honest with you, you can't really see anything, so it's kind of irrelevant. What we've also seen an image of is the Primal Groudon EX in the Hone Collection box. And this, we can't see much, but we can see a bit. One thing is, in the top left-hand corner, it says Mega, Primal Reversion, and it says Evolves from Groudon EX, which means that it seems to function in the same way as the regular Mega EXs. Well, it does seem weird saying regular Mega EXs. And that is that you'll just put it on your regular EX. Um, you're not going to be kind of going Mega into Primal or anything like that. It's just going to be straight from EX to Primal EX. Now, we don't know if it's going to end your turn 
the chances are it's going to. However, with the Spirit Link cards, Pokemon does seem to be going away from ending your turn in order to Mega Evolve. So maybe the Primal Evolutions are a chance to go back and just stop the ending your turn. Now, for the record, that's a very flimsy argument. I don't believe for a second that's actually what's going to happen. I can't imagine it won't end your turn, but maybe there'll be trainer cards like we see for Mega Gengar EX and Gengar Spirit Link card, whereby there's a trainer which stops your turn ending. We won't know that um, until the set gets spoiled a bit. And remember, Primal Groudon, Primal Kyogre are not from our November set, Phantom Forces. They will, in fact, in fact be from our February set, which is going to be the beginning of our Omega, Sapphire, and... Um, I can't remember the no new games. You know the ones I'm talking about. The remakes of Ruby and Sapphire. Now, um, there's another thing there which is also particularly interesting and that is that there's kind of an ability but I suppose the silly question we need to ask is when is ability not an ability and that is when it's an Omega Barrier I think it's Omega Barrier Primal Groudon has a thing at the top of its card underneath the name so not where you would see the ability and it reads Omega Barrier Whenever your opponent plays a trainer card, excluding Pokemon tools and stadium cards, prevent all effects of that card done to this Pokemon. That means that, for instance, um, if you put special energy on, or any energy on Groudon, Crushing Hammer can't take it off. If they reprint um, Enhanced Hammer like we think they're going to, that won't get rid of um, any special energy on Groudon. It means Groudon will be immune to Hypnotoxic Laser or Escape Rope won't make Groudon switch, etc. Anything which affects Groudon, that will stop. Now, tools are um, exempt from this, so something like Stadium still would. And like the Head Noiser card, which we saw the Team Flare card I revealed last week, I believe, that still would affect uh Primal Ground on EX because it is a Pokemon Tool card. Also, interestingly, because it's an Omega Barrier and it's not an ability, presumably that means that it won't be blocked by Garbodor. And also that, in theory, there seems to be nothing stopping Primal Ground on having an Omega Barrier and an ability. Now, we can't see the ability part of that card yet, the part of the card where there would be an ability. Now, whether Pokemon are going to want to do an Omega Barrier and an ability and one or two attacks all on the same card, we don't know. But let's face it, Mega Reactors have been fairly underwhelming. We've seen a little bit of play from... Um, Mega Kangaskhan EX around about Nationals, and I believe one even made Top 4 of Worlds, but that's really not much for an entire new game mechanic. It would be like nobody playing EXs. So, I think Pokemon should be trying to make the Mega EXs a little bit better if they're going to keep this It Ends Your Turn. Maybe these Omega Barriers are going to be their ways to um, try and even it up a little bit. It's not going to make them amazing on its own, but maybe you pair that with a couple of good attacks or an ability and maybe it starts looking pretty darn good. We'll know more when the set comes out. Something I should have mentioned when I was talking about Phantom Forces is that there are going to be a bunch of Team Flare cards, but most importantly there are going to be two special Team Flare Hyper Gear Pokemon tool cards. Now one of them is Head Noiser. The other one will also be a tool that you attach to your opponent's Pokemon. Now, bearing in mind you can't do this if your opponent's already got a tool attached, so the obvious way to block this would be to um, just make sure you've always got a Pokemon tool on your active Pokemon, or the Pokemon with which you're attacking, and that's kind of going to stop your opponent attacking, attaching these. As previously mentioned, you, your opponent could always play, for instance, um, a um, startling megaphone and then just attach a tool to you after getting rid of the existing tool but that's a lot to add to have in your hand in one turn so there we go that is the news for this week what I want to talk about now is Seismitoad and fighting decks now 
just because we're going to talk about them with Seismitoad, as a very quick introduction to fighting decks, I am talking about decks which will largely revolve around Landris EX, who is weak to water, and Lucario EX, both of whom attack for one fighting energy, and with the other fighting cards, they can start building up a lot of damage very quickly. But first, I want to be talking about Seismitoad decks. Now, any of you that follow my YouTube channel, and if you don't, you really should. That's youtube.com forward slash user forward slash PTCG radio. Or just go on YouTube and search PTCG radio. We'll see that I've been playing Seismitoad decks quite a lot. And obviously if you play on PTCGO at the moment, you're likely to come across a few Seismitoad decks. And what basically happens... Um, and if, yes, if you go on the YouTube channel, sorry, you'll see a deck breakdown of one build. And I've already gone away from this build a little bit, but it, it's an example that's up there. And you'll also see a bunch of games I play with Seismitoad against a variety of decks. And Seismitoad, basically, and I'm not going to go into a huge explanation of the deck, because you can find it on my YouTube channel, but it's something I want to talk about on the podcast for those that haven't gone on the deck breakdown. If you're listening to this on YouTube... The deck breakdown's like, I don't know, half a dozen videos down. Just click on it. Go on. Pause this if you want. It'll be fun. So Seismitoad basically all revolves around its Quaking Punch attack, which for a double colourless energy does 30 damage and blocks your opponent using Trainer's next turn. Now 30 damage might not sound like a lot, but you stick a Muscle Band on there, it goes up to 50. You stick a Verbank City Gym in play and a Hypnotostic Laser, that goes up to 80. And that's basically the deck. Seismitoad EX is most commonly paired with, and should most commonly be paired with, Garbodor. You get a Garbodor on the bench, you attach a tool, probably a floatstone, so you're not screwed over by Lissandra. Uh, you, you stick a Garbodor on the bench, you attach a tool, hopefully a floatstone. And not only can your opponent not use trainers, but they can't use abilities. And the general way you get around Garbodor is by playing a startling megaphone to get the tool off of Garbodor to turn off Garbodor's um, abilities blocking ability and give yourself abilities back. But if you're blocking trainers using Seismitoad, that's not possible. Your opponent can't play a Startling Megaphone and they are going to be trainer locked and ability locked until they knock out the Seismitoad. Now that all sounds well and good and that's essentially it. In terms of backup Pokemon, the only backup Pokemon Seismitoad really needs is Mewtwo. Because Mewtwo is a good counter for Seismitoad, as is Deoxys, more on that in a minute. And Mewtwo counters both of these, as well as being a Pokemon you can build up. But there have... as in put loads of energy and then attack for a big. Now there have been other people proposing other kind of Seismitoad decks, a lot of them with Garbodor. And there's two I want to have a look at quickly. One which I've been playing around with, which most people don't seem to be realising, so consider this somewhat of a secret deck for now, is Seismitoad Verizian. And essentially what you do is you play Seismitoad exactly like you would usually with your Laser and your Verbank and your Mewtwo and your Garbodor. The only difference is you put in two Verizian and you switch all of your Water Energy or whatever other energy they are to Grass Energy. And the reason you play Verizion in Seismitoad is for a couple of reasons. First of all, in the mirror, you don't need to put down Garbodor, and that means as long as you've got Verizion out, your opponent can't hurt you with laser. Now, truth be told, your opponent is probably going to get a Garbodor down, but Verizion does two things. First of all, it stops your opponent using a laser until they get a Garbodor down. Um, and by which time, you're probably going to have them trainer locked anyway, so they're still not going to be able to use laser. And the second thing it does is it basically wins the mirror. Because if you Emerald Slash without a Muscle Band, that does 100 for 2 energy to Seismitoad. And that basically is 100 because of the grass weakness that Seismitoad has. And that's a nice easy 2 hit KO. It also has water resistance, so Seismitoad won't do much to it. And when you Emerald Slash, you can search your deck for two grass energy, put them onto your bench Mewtwo to stop your opponent Mewtwoing you. It basically also wins you the mirror. Now, the reason I'm giving this deck away for, to you rather than hiding it from you is it's not particularly good. It's slightly clunky in that you're using Garbodor and Verizion, and there's games when you're going to want to use Verizion, but you're going to have to get Garbodor out. And also, you don't really get any big attacks in this deck. You can't use Seismitoad's second attack. Verizion only hits for 50. And Mewtwo doesn't really hit for enough. 
until you've got a load of energy on. Now what you could do is stick in a couple of Rizian and then put in a Genesect or two and start Emerald Slashing onto Genesect, but then you've ended up with a weird Verizian Mewtwo Garbodor, Verizian Genesect hybrid, and that's going to be a clunky deck. So feel free to take that idea and run with it. It's got potential, and I've won some games, and when you play the mirror with this deck against other Seismitoad decks, you'll win. Like, straight away. It's not even really particularly close. You win very quickly. Against other decks, it doesn't help your Rizzi and Genesect matchup. It's just a little bit awkward. Now, the other deck I've seen proposed is basically Seismitoad, Mewtwo, Garbodor, Charizard. So instead of playing your Verizian, you play it with Charizard, and you take your grass or water energy out, and you put in fire energy. Now, there's a couple problems with this. First of all, Charizard doesn't quite do enough damage until you've got a load of energy on him. Now, you can play the good Charizard, the one everyone's been playing with Pyro, which hits 60 for free colourless energy, but even with a muscle band, that's only doing 160 to a Verizian or a Genesect, and until you get a Garbodor out, your lasers aren't actually doing any damage, so that means that until you've got a, um, a Charizard out with free energy on, and a laser and a Garbodor on the bench with a tool without it being red signalled and killed or Lissandra and killed, you're not actually killing a Verizian or Genesect. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is quite a big investment. But a lot of people are saying, well, ju just play it with fire energy. Don't, quite frankly. If you play it with fire energy, then basically what's going to happen is... Uh, you're going to lose the mirror, like, every time, because Charizard, shockingly, not very good against Seismitoad. And then you're not playing Water Energy, so you can't use Seismitoad's big attack. And it's all going to fall apart very, very quickly. I think there is a little bit of mileage in using the other Charizard, just to use his free energy attack, because when you get a Garbodor out, and if you can keep a Garbodor on the field, and against Rizzi and Genesect, it's not the easiest thing to keep a Garbodor on the field. But if you can get a Garbodor out, and you can keep a Garbodor on the field, then you can get free energy on a um, Charizard, and then you can, you know, be one-hitting all that stuff. But a lot of the time, by the time you're one-hitting them with your Charizard with free energy, and a muscle band, and a laser, and a Garbodor with a tool attached on the bench, they're just going to G-boost your next turn. Because, of course, when you Charizard them, they will no longer be trained a lot. If you re... Actually, well, no, we'll go through that in a second. So that's the way people generally play Seismitoad. You want to play Mewtwo, you want to play Garbodor. You could play it with Verizian and Grass Energy. You could play it with Charizard and Fire Energy. I don't particularly like either of those ideas. Now, in terms of other cards to play it with, there aren't really that many options that I've seen that people have put out that are good. One of your biggest problems, really, is going to be Verizian Genesect. Because Verizian Genesect hurts you. They hit you for weakness. Verizian 2 hits you easily while Emerald Slashing. Um, Genesect 1 hit KOs you with Megalo Cannon without even ever getting G-Booster out. And they can play Mewtwo to counter your Mewtwo's, which is about all you've got. Now, there's a few ways around this, but basically, it ain't going to work very well. Now, here's what I would say about Seism uh, Seismitoad Mewtwo. Just play a consistent list. If you look in the history through Pokemon over the last few years, and you look at the decks that are winning, they tend to be consistent decks. Don't muck about with all these tricks. Put in a few things by all means, but don't go putting in Reshiram and Fire Energy. It's not going to work. You want to just be playing Seismitoad, Mewtwo, Garbodor. Put in one or two techs if you're happy, but don't take away from the consistency of your list. That's the key thing. Now, one common tech which I've seen people play is Reshiram. And the theory behind Reshiram is sound. And the theory basically is, well, I don't really have a game against Rizzi and Genesect, so I'm going to put Reshiram out in the active, and then my opponent's got to Emerald Slash into it. And when my opponent Emerald Slashes into it, that's not really a big problem, because they're going to Emerald Slash into it, and I'm going to be able to just... Um, you know, then I'm going to be able to revenge KO them for loads of damage. And that will work if the Verizian Genesect player you're playing against is an idiot. But they're probably not. I tried this against a Verizian Genesect player, 
and it worked perfectly. And then I tried against another Rizian Genesec player, and all they would do is play something like an Escape Rope or a Lassonde or a Red Signal if I couldn't get Garbodor up and running. And they would hit something for 100, and it would hit my Reshiram on the bench for 20. And then because they didn't really need g boost to get rid of any of my Pokemon, they would then... Uh, yeah, Megalo Cannon to 120 to the bench. They didn't need G-Booster. And then they would just you put a Muscle Band, and then the 120 plus the 20 already on Reshiram will get the one-hit KO, and Reshiram's done basically nothing. Even if you put a Muscle Band on Reshiram, that's still only 120 damage, which isn't going to be enough. Bear in mind, Verizian's got a Water Resistance, and Genesect has got... You know, they've both got a bunch of high HP. A smart Verizian Genesect player is just going to sit there and attach loads of grass energy and they're going to kill your Reshiram. As a side note, if you're playing Frisian Genesect, it's time to put a couple of um, Hypnotosic Lasers into your deck. And the reason is, Genesect with a Muscle Band and a Hypnotosic Laser will one-hit KO a Reshiram. So if your opponent wants to sit there and hide behind a Reshiram, let them. Say they put a Muscle Band on, they're doing a whopping 80 damage per turn. They're not even two-hit KOing you unless they play lasers, which isn't going to happen, unless they get a Garbodor out, which is a load to do. And then you bring up the Genesect and you just hit them for 120, play a laser, and they die, like straight away, in one hit. You don't need to Emerald Slash into them. Just sit on the bench and build stuff up on the bench. And you're going to win pretty quickly that way. Even if they do slowly KO one Verizion with a Reshiram, you're still going to take out all of their Pokemon. Because as soon as you take down that first Reshiram, what are they going to do? Get a Mewtwo up and running with a boatload of energy that you can then revenge KO with your own Mewtwo, and then you're back in a driver's seat. Reshiram is a really good good tactic against Verizian Genesect players that don't know what they're doing. But they can play around it quite easily. You put two Hypnotosic Laser in your deck, you're probably beating that Reshiram before it ever gets a big outrage going. So let's talk a little bit more about the weaknesses of Seismitoad. I've been asked this question a lot lately. How do you beat Seismitoad? And as someone who's played about 50 games with Seismitoad, various lists, and against Seismitoad, more again, I think I'm pretty well versed in Seismitoad at the moment. Now, here's something I want to stress to a lot of people out there. If you sit there saying, this tech is amazing and will win me the game, well, no matter what tech it is, no matter what um, deck it is, you're probably an idiot and you're probably not a good player and you're probably not becoming a good player. One thing you need to do is you need to recognize the weaknesses of your tech. So, another silly tech which has been suggested in Seismitoad decks is Victini EX and Victory Peace. Let me tell you now, ladies and gentlemen, for the love of all that is good and holy, do not play Victini. Here's the best case scenario. You start Victini, or you can get it active, and you can find your Victory Peace. And your opponent only plays Grass Pokemon, or you can find a Lissandra every turn you're going to win. If your opponent puts up a non-grass Pokemon, especially a non-EX Pokemon, well, you're not really doing very much with Victini. You're doing like 50 damage. That's not much. And while you're doing that, your opponent can build up something on the bench which will KO you because Victini's got 110 HP and gives away two prizes. Not to mention that in the mirror, if you end up starting with it, there's an easy two prizes for an opposing Seismitoad because Seismitoad DCE Muscle Band Laser without Verbank does 110 to a water weak Victini. Not to mention against any deck that plays Lugia, that's the easiest three prizes they're ever going to get. And so on and so forth. It's not going to work. So, if you look at Victini, the easy thing to say about Victini is, Victini, victory piece. I'm one hit KOing Verizian and Genesect for no energy. Yes. What happens if the Verizian Genesect player plays a startling megaphone? You have no way to get that victory piece back. Victory piece is dead. Now, you might play some obscure card that gets it back, but the point is... It's not really, and I don't even feel, I don't know if there is anything now, because Recycle's even been rotated. So you might get one KO out of it, and then you're back down where you were. You get N to four, and your opponent wins the same way they were always going to win. Victini X isn't going to get you the win. Here are the best techs which I have come across for Seismitoad. The first tech, and some of you aren't going to like this answer, play better. Seismitoad decks have to 
and this is the hardest thing about playing Seismitoad. You have to find the perfect balance of when you're going to block trainers and when you're going to attack big. Force them into an uncomfortable position. Or just take the initiative. If you take an early KO, whether that's by using your Seismitoad to do 130, building up a Mewtwo on the bench, even taking a KO with Lugia for only two prizes, only, because they've got a Garbodor out, you're forcing them into doing stuff, you're forcing them into breaking the trainer lock, and then you're probably going to end up winning. But there are a couple of texts which I found which are good. Now the one thing everyone said is, just play Leafeon. One energy, it does 20 damage times the total amount of energy attached to your opponent, all of your opponent's Pokemon, and Seismitoad's weak to grass. What I don't like about Leafeon is, I'm putting the power back into my opponent's hand. And I don't want to put the power into my opponent's hand. If I'm a Seismitoad player, I'm keeping them trainer locked, so I know there's no laser coming down, I know there's no um, muscle band coming down, I know there's no silver bangle coming down. To put it another way, I know that my opponent is not going to be playing any kind of deck. Which, they're not going to play any card which allows them to do more damage. So let's get out of the way first of all. Unless your opponent is also going to start playing Deoxys down, which... That's a dodgy way to go. I don't think that's going to be happening. So, let's just take that off the board. That doesn't mean that Leafeon is a bad tech. Because you can still force your opponent to only playing down two energy. But here's my thought process as a Seismitoad player. Alright, they're doing essentially um, 40 damage times by the energy that I have in play. So if I've got one energy in play, they're doing 20 damage. And that's going to double with a grass weakness to 40 damage. I'm fine. All I'm going to do is just put one, I'm either going to force them into a free hit KO, or my personal thing, which I like to do with um, when I'm playing against Leafeon, and I've played about four games, I think, against Leafeon decks, and I've yet to lose to a deck with playing Leafeon with Seismitoad. Because like a lot of people, in my, um, like a lot of people who play Seismitoad, I'm playing Max Potion. Not only that, and I know Leafy I know Leafeon has a water resistance, so Quaking Punch does ten, but you add a muscle band, Quaking Punch does thirty. You add a laser Verbank, that's thirty plus thirty in between turns. Leafeon ain't gonna live for very long. It's gonna die pretty quickly. So what are you gonna do as Leafeon? Well first of all, use energy crush. But if I'm if I'm playing a Seismitoad deck, I'm going to get my laser out, I'm going to get my max potions ready, and I'm going to put... Heck, I can put four energy on the field. Because four energy, my opponent is doing 80 damage. Times by two for weakness is 160. Then I'm going to play a max potion and do it all over again. Let's say they even kill a Seismitoad. Okay, maybe I've taken two prizes, you've taken two prizes, but you've lost your two Leafeons. Which were your techs against me, and I've lost nothing. What you can do is use Leaf Blade. Now, Leaf Blade falls into the same category of 60 damage, plus 20 if you flip heads. So you need to wait for an opportunity to put down a Muscle Band, then use Leaf Blade, hope to hit a head. Or use Leaf Blade with a Silver Bangle, and then you're guaranteed the 90 damage. Something along these lines. It's not perfect. But what else are you going to do? It's something which I would highly recommend you guys having a look at. But don't, please, just tell me Leafeon wins against Seismitoad. Because it doesn't. To say Leafeon wins against Seismitoad, you're basically saying the person I'm playing against is an idiot, and that person is going to be unprepared. A good Seismitoad player, a good player of any deck, is going to know what the counters are, and they're going to be prepared for it. Or they're just going to assume that um, that list isn't being played. So there's the first thing. But the absolute best counter I found for Seismitoad is Deoxys. And if you're playing, and I don't know how many other people have noticed this, but I, I must confess, this was actually brought up to me in a game, rather than something which I actually did myself against Seismitoad. You get a Deoxys, you put a Plasma Energy and a Psychic Energy on, that does 90 damage to a Seismitoad. That's an easy two-hit KO. While Seismitoad, best case scenario, is two-hitting you back. 
And that's if they get a muscle band and a laser verbang and you don't get out of the active. As a side note, try and leave a float stone on your Deoxys because you're two hit KOing regardless of muscle band and you want to have a float stone there in case you want to retreat to another one. Now this does rely on you getting a chorus machine or two off early because if you don't get a chorus machine or two off early you're not going to be able to attach enough energy quick enough if they get off to a monster start and hit their lasers at the right time. But that's the best counter I've found. And then what are they going to do? If, they, if, if you're killing their Seismitoad with your Deoxys, they're going to counter you with Mewtwo. But if they counter you with Mewtwo, you get your trainers back. So then you get Chorus Machine. And if you're playing Psychic Energy Chorus Machine, that's easier than getting a DCE and a Muscle Band or a um, Laser, in my experience. So that's Seismitoad. I haven't said nearly everything you can say about Seismitoad. But I've told you roughly how to play the deck. I've told you what cards you need to include. I've talked about some of the text people want to put into Seismitoad. And I have told you about some of the main weaknesses of Seismitoad. Essentially, in terms of matchups, Seismitoad is going to be random Stage 1 and Stage 2 decks pretty much every time because it stops them setting up. The other thing that Seismitoad does is it's going to beat... Um, your traditional kind of um, fighting deck, which we'll talk about in a minute. It's got a very good fighting matchup. It's got a good plasma matchup if they don't get a good start, but if they do, like I've said, Deoxys, Kyurem, etc., can start taking you down. And it's got a horrific Verizian Genesec matchup. And I've yet to find a compelling argument for anything. Victini Victory piece, I don't like it. Charizard, it's too much investment for something that can then just be G-boosted when you give them their trainers back. Reshiram, a good Verizian Genesec player, is going to play around that fairly easily. Alright then, so... That, ladies and gentlemen, is that. So let's talk about the fighting deck nice and quickly then. Like I've said, it revolves around the Landorus from Boundaries Crossed that does 30 damage to the active and 30 to the bench for one fighting energy. Or Lucario from Furious Fist, which does 30 to the active, going through resistance for one fighting energy. And then you've got Muscle Band, which puts up another 20. Strong Energy, which adds another 20 damage. And Fighting Stadium, which adds another 20 damage to an EX Pokemon. So essentially, if you're facing down an EX Pokemon, turn 1, you get Muscle Band, Fighting Stadium, Strong Energy. You're doing 90 damage on turn 1. This is pretty good. And the way this deck generally works is really fast. Quick hitting damage. And when it comes to what you play it with, you actually play it with the exact same stuff you play Seismitoad with. You play it with Garbodor, and you play it with Mewtwo. Now, there are weird fighting decks running around, like Dustwire and Machamp. I don't think they're as good, I don't think they're as effective, and I'm not going through them. If I'm playing against a Landorus Dustwire, all I'm going to do, if I'm, say, playing Seismitoad, will gut it, you're weak to my attacking Pokémon... All I need to do is just get a Seismitoad using Quaking Punch, get a Garbodor on the bench, occasionally Max Potion, and you're pretty much guaranteed to lose. You've added some inconsistency into your deck. Mega Lucario EX is quite good, but generally just play Garbodor to face down stuff like Pyro, and you should be okay in that respect. Now, that's basically how you play it. There are a couple of other cards that warrant inclusion. And I, I can't really tell you much about playing this deck. You play double colourless energy for Mewtwo. You play strong energy because it's amazing. And you round out the rest with fighting energy. You try to get Landorus in the active or Lucario in the active, depending on what your opponent's playing, to counter your weaknesses. And then you just go for it. You play muscle band, you play laser. All is good. As a side note, I am a big fan of laser Verbank in fighting rather than fighting stadium. Because Fighting Stadium does 20 extra damage to an EX, Laser Verbank does 30 extra damage to everything. And I know Fighting Stadium works every turn. Laser Verbank only works on the turns where you have a laser, or your opponent has a Pokemon in the active which you have previously played a laser against, but it's still better for my money than just playing your Fighting Stadium. There are two other cards that warrant inclusion, and honestly, they're the only two I think warrant inclusion, and I'm not a fan of playing either, other than to force a 7 prize game. And that is the non-EX Landorus. 
It's first attack, 20 damage, 1 fighting energy, obviously strong energy, muscle band, etc. Then raises this up. Attach a basic energy card from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. I would maybe put one of these in my deck as kind of a mid-game play. But it's weak to water and a lot of people are playing water at the moment, especially with Seismitoad. And generally, you want to be going Lucario EX or Landorus EX and hitting hard. If you're going to put more than one energy on a Pokemon, don't go for Landorus as attack, go for Lucario's. Two energy, 60 damage, draw till six. That is brilliant for end-proofing you. It's wonderful for making your deck end-proof. Not only that, but that 60 damage can soon become 120 or even 140 with or 150 or whatever time you start putting strong energy, muscle band and laser verbank or fighting stadium onto that particular Pokemon. So it's pretty good in that respect. The other one is Horlicher, which again I don't like, it's got 70 HP. It does 60 damage to an EX for one energy, nothing to a non-EX, and its ability doesn't allow it to use weakness or resistance, but you're going to be playing Garbodor, so you're going to turn that off anyway, so it's kind of irrelevant other than turn 1 or turn 2 if you're having a bad start. With a um, Silver Bangle, that wall will one-hit KO a Thunderous or a Darkrai, but honestly, most people, because of these fighting decks, are going to be shying away from fighting weak EX Pokemon. I would maybe put one non-EX Landorus in your deck, I wouldn't play Horlicher. One thing that you need to do when building these decks in Pokemon is really figure out what they do. Now, take Seismitoad for instance. What does Seismitoad do? It slows the game down, it doesn't one-hit KO, and you're going for slow and steady, stop your opponent playing. So I'm going to put in damage modifiers, like Muscle Band and Laser Verbank, because I need to make up for the fact I'm only hitting for 30. I'm going to put in Garbodor, because if I'm trainer-locking them, they're going to try and get around that with abilities. So I turn off their abilities. And I'm going to put stuff in like Max Potion, and maybe when it comes back in, Enhanced Hammer, because I want to slow the game down. Max Potion is going to basically stop two, three, four turns of their attacks, which basically means I've got two, three, four extra turns to do what my deck does. Similarly, if I'm playing Enhanced Hammer, that gets rid of their energy, or Crushing Hammer, that gets rid of their energy, and what that does is give me extra turns to do what my deck does. So when you're thinking about this Landorus Lucario deck, maybe you play Max Potion, but honestly, the main plan of this deck is, I'm faster than you, I hit harder than you, I'm going to go. So you play more Lucario than Landorus, because Lucario's got the second attack, which is more likely to lead to KOs, than Landorus is all Lucario's first attack. Not only that, but Lucario is more likely to survive against a Seismato than a Landorus who's weak to water. If my opponent wants to bring out a Mewtwo against my Lucario, well I'm also playing Mewtwo, so let's play this Mewtwo war. Let's see what happens. Now, the other thing you want is you want the damage modifiers. You want four Muscle Band. You want four Laser. Three Verbank. Maybe even four. Or four Fighting Stadium. You want four Strong Energy. You want to be going as fast and as hard as you can. If you get a slow start or your opponent takes a lead, you're probably going to lose. When I play Seismitoad against Fighting, I've got about an... I would say a 70 to 80% win ratio with Seismitoad against Fighting. Because here's the deal. Seismitoad hits Landorus for weakness. Mewtwo hits Lucario for weakness. I block their trainers. I block any abilities they may want to use, which are probably none. And they've got giant retreat costs, so I play laser. And then I block them out of using Switch or Floatstone, etc. It is, in essence, a favourable matchup. A very favourable matchup. So why am I losing 20 to 30% of my games against these fighting decks? Because I win when I get a turn 2 Seismitoad and I get my lasers. If I get a slow Seismitoad, or I don't hit my lasers, or I whiff my max potions when I need to, or my opponent just gets out to a hella good start, and they can hit 90 on their first turn of the game going second, with a strong energy, um, in fact, with a strong energy Verbank laser and a muscle band, they're actually hitting 100 on turn 1. And you just can't compete with that. Now, I think in a best 2 out of 3, they're unlikely to be doing that 2 of the 3 games, but they could. That's what the fighting deck needs to be. So, I can't give you a list, it's a podcast, and if I read a deck, this is going to get annoying. 
What I can tell you is what you should be considering when making these decks. Seismitoad is a lock deck. You get the lockdown. Landorus Lucario is a speed deck. You get going as fast as you can. Now, in terms of matchups, it hasn't got a great Seismitoad matchup, but you've got speed, and you can work with that. You don't have a great Verizian Genesect matchup, because they can one-hit you quite easily with G-Booster. You need to get going early, especially if your opponent plays, say, Max Potion and Herbal Energy. You are going to be behind the 8-ball, and that's going to be a problem sooner rather than later. So, it's far from ideal, but it is stuff that you can work with. It's stuff that you can work around. And that basically is that fighting deck. In terms of techs, you sh really shouldn't be playing any techs other than maybe one non-EX Landorus. Now, I am going a bit simplistic here. I may well be missing techs which you think are particularly cool and important. I may not have mentioned some stuff about the deck which you consider to be, you know, vital and important and interesting. And if that's the case, then I apologise. But I think it is quite important that I give you the kind of main information. Some stuff you're going to have to figure out yourself. I've given you an introduction to the decks. I've told you roughly what you need to include, roughly what you're going to be aiming to do when you're playing them, and given you some tech ideas and some weaknesses, and some ways around the weaknesses. The rest of it basically is up to you. But when it comes to Furious Fist, they are the two new decks. So now we've looked at what happens to Verizian Genesect, to Plasma, to Evil Tal, to Empoleon, and to Flygon Dust Noir when, uh, with Furious Fists and the rotation, and we've looked at the two new decks. Next week, if nothing else happens, we're going to carry on with this. We're going to be looking at some slightly fringer decks, things like Ninetales and Moonga, seeing if we can recreate that kind of deck, and all that good stuff. But I think for now, we've done just about enough. I've had an idea for an awesome Flareon-based deck, because let's face it, after the ECC last year, I'm not going to quit on Flareon until I absolutely have to. So I'm going to go work on that deck. You guys, after you've listened to this, make sure you get over to Twitter, at the Wassy. I'm getting very close to 500 followers. If you haven't followed me, there really is no excuse at this point. Go and follow me. I have about 500 listeners to this lovely show a week, so I really should have 500 Twitter followers. If you're not one of them, go now. You may be listening to this on the internet or in your house on an iPod. You can do it now while you listen, while I'm talking, you lucky people. Go over to find me on Twitter, at the Wossy, T-H-E-W-O-S-S-Y, and uh, send me a comment, disagree with stuff I've said, agree with stuff I've said, ask me questions, whatever you feel like doing. Um, get yourself over to YouTube, youtube.com forward slash user forward slash PTCG radio. Check out my videos, like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe. I'm also very close to 100 subscribers, or, uh, sorry, 500 subscribers on YouTube, and I would very much like to get to 500. If you're listening to this on YouTube, just stick a comment down below, but click that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I'm going to be back next week with more Pokemon-related goodness. Until then, look after yourselves, have a lovely week. My name's Ross, and you've been listening to PTCG Radio.